Hello, welcome to video four. What is material? The rotate about axis node. I've gone ahead and set up a quick little example here. What I have here is a sphere. This sphere is using the rotate about axis node. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you rotating it using my material instance. So right here I have the scale at which it rotates. And if I was to adjust this, you're going to see it rotate in a 360 degree along the z-axis. Now I adjust it from 0 to 2, and you see it spinning. Now one thing to note here is, even though the sphere physically looks like it's over here, it is here. Because I'm using static lighting, that's why you can see a little bit of a shadow here. And you can also see the fact that the transform widget is here. So if I was to adjust it, it's going to adjust it accordingly. So let's go ahead and see how this works. Let me move this back out of the way, and we'll look at the node itself. So the first thing to notice is the node has four inputs and one parameter. Let's cover the parameter first. This is our period. It's the time it takes to rotate from 0 to 100. So for example, if the period was 1, and we wanted it to be rotated halfway, then our period would be 0.5. If our, our um, sorry, not our period, our rotation angle is going to be 0.5 when we get to it. But basically, a period of 1 means it takes 1 second to rotate completely, so half of our rotation is going to be 0.5 in terms of time. So, our next parameter is going to be our axis. This is our normalized rotation axis. This is basically the axis upon which it rotates. Now it takes a vector 3, which is our RGBA, well technically a vector 4, but it takes a vector 3, which is RGB, and it's our X, Y, and Z. So since I have this set to a 1, it's going to rotate along our Z axis. If you wanted to rotate it along the X, you'd put a 1 here, Y, a 1 here, or you can have any combination of all three. Now this is what I was talking about earlier in terms of our rotation angle. This is the one that I meant in terms of if I change this to 1 and I set our rotation angle to 0.5, for example, what we're going to do is we're going to end up having our image, our item, rotated exactly halfway. Now, since I have not applied our changes, that's why it wasn't halfway across. For our material, wait for it to compile. And there we go. Now it's halfway across. So our rotation angle determines, based on our period, how far along our rotation is going to be between a 0 and 1 for the full period. So a rotation angle, if I move this back over here and pull this back up, let's reset our rotation angle to zero. We're going to see it back at the beginning. And as we slowly adjust our rotation angle, you're going to see halfway across. And then one is going to basically bring it back to the beginning. And you'll notice our cube here, as we rotate, it's rotating completely. So the scale right here, rotation angle, is based upon the period and it's a percentage. Next we have our pivot point. This is going to be where on, let's set this back to zero to show for example, this is our pivot point for our sphere. It's dead in the middle. Setting up our pivot point to zero, zero, zero means our pivot point is going to be dead in the middle. We can offset this if we want to change where our pivot point wants to be on our item. Right now we want it in the middle, so we're going to leave it at 0, 0, 0. But keep in mind, this is basically the pivot point for your rotation. Our last one is going to be the position itself. This is going to be in a three-channel vector. Basically, what is the position of this object? Now here's something to note. If we were to create a rotate about axis, you're going to find it creates it automatically with an absolute world position node that's intended to be hooked up into the position itself. So keep that in mind, that it is not anything weird. It creates one automatically and it's intended to be used because the world position is what will drive your offset for the most part. So as you can see here, we have this hooked up. 
and we can get our rotation as we saw. Now let's cover a few of the weirdness. So let's say I wanted to drive it automatically. Well, we could use time. Time is really a really good way to drive something based upon time. So if I was to do that and apply it, what we're going to do instead of me manually setting the rotation angle, oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Let's pull this back up. There we go. What you're going to do is you're going to see our sphere now rotating automatically. One second, two second, three second, rotating automatically. Let's go ahead and adjust this. Let's take this to five seconds and apply it. And what you're going to do is you're going to see it now take five seconds to do our complete 360 degree rotation. Now, one thing you may be wondering is, it's weird how big of a loop I have going on here, how big my rotational circle is. And that's an issue you're going to have based on the world position, the size of your object, and things like that. So what you can do is you can take your world position, divide it by another number to make it smaller. So in this case, I'm dividing it by 15. And it's going to give you a much smaller circumference or much smaller area that is going to be rotating around. So when I divide this by 15 and we let it go on the time, now you can actually see I'm rotating it around this column. Now back to one of the points I brought up. If I was to play and walk here, you'll notice it goes through me. But if I was to try to go back here, you'll notice I'm stuck. Keep in mind, we are just rotating the material. We're not moving the physical item. So this sphere is technically still right here. And as you can see, I'm hitting this collision, but it looks like it's actually rotating around the object. So you could use this for practical effects where you just simply need something to rotate or to move in a rotational form, but not actually move the physical object. So as a cool little example, in the upcoming Fortnite video game, or for example, in Call of Duty zombie mode, when they're building defenses, where, for example, you walk up to a window, you tell it to build, and you see boards start flying from the ground up, they can use the rotate about axis to do that. You basically can drive it, for example, from your zero to one, zero, well, more like zero to half, for example. Well, let's see. It'll be more like a quarter rotation because zero would be flat, and then you'd have 90 degrees up. So, for example, let me go ahead and stop this. And I'd have to apply it to do it. And of course, there's nothing plugged in, so that doesn't work. So let's do that. So for example, let's say this board was on the ground, and this would be your zero time frame. Let's say you want it up against here, which would be your 25% or 0.25 time frame, if you have one second. You could tell it to rotate about this axis, which is going to be our x-axis. And it'll rotate from the bottom to here, and you could have each item rotate and they aren't physical objects. So their objects are actually may still be here or here physically. And then you could have them rotate into place on the material itself. So that way your player, for example, won't get obstructed by them because, you know, they're not physically there. They're in a different place. So it's an easy way of moving things without physically moving the item. Just give it the appearance of moving. So if you have any questions or comments on this, please feel free to leave them below.